What's up guys, this is Foden here with a little tutorial on how to edit the textures on some 3D models. Now, I'm going to open up a model I have called uh, BH, I think it is. Uh, on. Yeah, yeah, Blackhawk UH60. Um, now, I think I may have actually... Okay, cool. Um, got a bit of a problem because I've already done it on this one actually. Um, I've got to find the fuselage now. Which I can't. Nope, that's not that one. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Now I've just got to try and find. There it is. Um, find the right one just to put it back in. So Fusion Large goes there. Okay, so as we can see, sorry. We've got the Black Hawk and it says United States Army on it. And I want to edit that. I want it to say Team Caliber Army. So what you need to do is you need to go into Photoshop. If you have Photoshop. What you need to do is you need to find this material. So that's the Fusilized JPEG. Um, so then what I'll do is I'll open go to that folder, so let's throw it in, extra editing materials, 3D models, black hawk, texture and fuselage. So now we've got the texture inside Photoshop, and now we can edit it. Um, but, for example like this, I want to change the text, so first of all I need to get rid of the text, but if I do that I get rid of the background, sort of, what do you, um, sort of the bit behind the text as well, and I need that. I need that to stay there. So, how will I do it? Okay. Well, this is how I done it. Um, <clears throat> and it's just a little, a little technique that you could possibly use in other, other things, but you might not always be able to do this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste it. So I'm going to Control J and duplicate it. And I'm going to get the pen tool. And what we do is, I need sort of these panels. So, if I just get quickly get a, a tool, I need. Oh, I need it in a bright colour really, don't I? I need one oops, just quickly, one of these panel things. And you'll see why in a minute. So what I will do is I'll grab the pen tool and I will go for this one because that one's still getting a bit overrun by the text. And I'm just gonna grab each corner grab each corner of this panel that and that and once that's complete right click make selection then I come up to this little tool up here and click right click uh, then right click select inverse and then delete and what that does is that deletes everything apart from the bit that I've just selected <coughs> so now I've got this one little bit making sure the layer the, this new layer is selected I can move it around anywhere I want and what I want to do is I just want to position that correctly over the text and then we go to edit transform and I think I'm gonna go to distort on this one and then what we'll do is I'm gonna grab this top point and we're gonna move it up till this point matches this um, if that makes sense so I'm oh, bollocks. Uh, go back to distort grab that point and we're going to move that up to about here. Move this one down to about here because that matches. And that one can stay there like that. And then click tick. Now obviously as you can see this one's a lot brighter. And it is kind of messed up. But we'll add all the color correction and color corrections and all that after. So I'm just going to edit this a bit more. That will be fine. Then click Control J again on this layer, and we're going to move that down one as well. So we're going to move that up to about here, to matching this point upright. Then we go to Transform and Distort. And what we'll do is we'll do the same thing again. Match each corner up. And that's that one done. So basically we're just adding the panels back on to the actual um, model itself. So then we can 
create our own text and overlay that on top. So we'll do that one again. So this is that bottom one. That looks fine. Transform distort, and we will start getting this into position. If it wants to. And that one's got to come all the way at the end. No, nope, that one's still a bit funny on the left hand side. And it does blur a bit, but not being funny, the text is going to be over anyway, so. So that one goes there. Ah, oh, this one don't want to do. There we go. And that comes there. And it doesn't matter if you overlay them a bit too much. Like it doesn't really matter because I'll fix that bit as well. So we've just got to do two more. You know, it would be easier just to duplicate this one again. No, I'm not going to do that because then we're just, uh, that's just going to get all confusing. But yeah, duplicate this one again, and we're going to go and do the other one. So transform, distort. It doesn't want to do it. Like there we go. So that one's there. That one's got to come down here, and this one is up here. That's not right again. There's a lot of playing around, basically. Ah, oh, this is annoying me now. Just moving the whole bloody thing. I don't want that. I'm clicking the bloody point on the end. Oh wow. That's what annoys me about this fucking program. Alright, there we go. So then we put that on there. I just don't like this point, I swear I don't. There we go, I got it. Alright, we'll leave that one there. And then we'll just go and do the last one. So move, uh, duplicate that and move that one up. So that bit looks fine as it is, and we'll just do the other side. And we'll distort that one back into place. Actually, I think that looks alright. But now, if you zoom out, it kind of blends in, but then it kind of don't. So, what I do is I grab all of the layers, and I right-click and click Merge. And then that way, I can just go to Image, whilst it's selected, go to Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast, and I can just bring the brightness down a bit and match that up. I think that looks fine. So the colours, I think, all right because obviously the text will be going over it, so you won't see it that much. Um, but these lines are really sharp, and these ones are faded. So I just grab the line tool down here, or if you haven't got it, click and hold and select the line tool because you may have the rectangle tool selected. Click the line tool, <coughs> and then we need a a colour, um, like a greyish colour, which is the same one as this line. So I'm just going to go in close and pick that colour out, which is here. And then start drawing, uh, create a new layer for this actually. I'll put all these lines on a new layer. And then I'll just go and. Oh, the weight is one pixels if that means anything, if yours has changed. Um, and we'll just start drawing lines just to make the lines a bit more sharper. Because obviously we've been blurring the textures, we've been stretching them. And it doesn't matter what they look like at first. And we'll do some more at the end. Alright, so, and what we'll do is we'll rasterize these and we will merge them again. So now we've got these lines. Now you can zoom out and you can either keep them like they are, or what I've done is I just slightly turn the opacity down on them. Maybe to about there. And then what we can do is we can just hide these two layers by clicking the little eye, and we can create a new layer and create our text. So grab the text, click, and we'll call it Team Caliber Army. I'm just going to put two spaces in there because it's this font which just goes a bit funny. Now this font is called Bebas, if you would like it. B-E-B-A-S. If you go onto the DA font website, so that is... Uh, da font like that, da font uh, dot com. 
you can go and download them from there. So <clears throat> he's a big bastard, isn't he? <clears throat> and then what we do to want to make sort of make it match this um, text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that just underneath and stretch it. Oops. Stretch it so all the characters look kind of the same. So I think that's all right. And then what we'll do is we will make this the colour of that text. So grab this little pic. Uh, sorry, I got a bit too fast. I think. Select the <coughs> the text, and then come up to this colour here. That's the text colour. Click that, and then just hover over the text on the actual original texture, and click it, and it will have your texture automatically picked up on it. And then click OK. And that is it. So that looks all the same. If I just now overlap that and turn on the other two, zoom out, I have Team Caliber Army now printed onto my, um, onto my, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I can't remember. Model. <laughs> so that's how you do it, guys. And as you can see there, there's not that much, you know, obviously you can grab the text. Control T, and that's a free transform um, shortcut, and then you can just start rotating it a bit. Maybe have it like that. I don't know what you'll like it, but I'm going to keep mine like that. But as you can see, it's got the reverse here, and that says United States Army backwards. Now, all I have to do is not really that hard to be fair. You can just, where is it? Okay, so this is for hide it all. I've got this layer here, which is the actual panels. You can actually just duplicate that straight and just move it up into the position uh, into position there. Look, because they're the same. Thank God. So no, <laughs> that was an easy job. And then where I've got the extra line. Oh shit! I could have done the extra lines as well. So duplicate the extra lines. Move them up, so that's about there. And then the text. We can duplicate that. Uh, just hide everything as well, else. And move the text up. And what we need to do is we just need to put this point, this point, like the far left, onto the far right of this one. And then we'll just grab this and do that. And then that's basically just flipped it. And then we move that into position. And then we turn everything else on. So now we've got Team Caliber Army on both sides. All edited nicely. Nothing too bad. But if you do obviously want to make it a bit darker, all you have to do is select the, the, the layer you need. Effects, brightness and contrast. And you can bring the brightness down to whatever you want. So that, I think, looks a bit better, but I'm just going to leave it. And what you do is you go to File, and you can just click Save. Oh, but I'm not going to, because this is the original texture. If not, you can just go Save As. And what you can do is, you can, because obviously I've got my texture folder here. I think they're all JPEGs. These are all the custom ones I made, because they were all original. All the original textures are in this text folder. But I created another folder and put saved all my custom ones into this one. So I have both textures, both normal and custom ones, uh, just in case I want to use the normal ones again. So yeah, it'd be easy just to go file save as and then just save it wherever you want. And that, that is how you do it. So if I do that, no, I'm not going to do that. Just pretend I've saved it because I've already done it before, you see. <clears throat> and then what you do is you may have to close Cinema 4D down because <clears throat> if, if I was doing it, if I just saved it, and I'll just come back into Cinema 4D, it will still say United States Army. So I need to come out of Cinema 4D. I'll just do it now. So come out, and then open it up again. And then what we'll do is, it should have the Team Caliber writing on it, like this. But I added my logo in as well. Um, but you need to close it, Cinema 4D down to open it, in order for it to realise that the texture has been changed and that but if you had the original texture on it anyway, um, so let me just quickly do that. Uh, right. 
if you didn't have the text on it beforehand and you want to change it because obviously you saved it into another folder or something you just click on it and you just go to your custom texture which mine will be in the texture folder fuselage and then you can place it on there like that so yeah I hope this kind of helped you guys to sort of really like kind of know how to edit textures on models and that so um, I hope you liked it please like and comment and I'll see you in the next video peace